So today I wanted to continue our exploration of modern tiki cocktails from modern tiki bars across the country. Now recently I just did one from Austin, Texas, Tiki Tatsuya's Eagle Fang, and you can use the card up here or the link in the description below. But today we're gonna be traveling traveling to Wilmington, North Carolina to go visit the Soro Drowner to check out their signature cocktail, the Soro Drowner. I'm Andy, this is Easy Tiki Drinks, so let's do this. So the Soro Drowner opened this year, actually. It is a relatively brand new tiki bar, and it's located in Wilmington, North Carolina. It is a fully immersive tiki adventure bar that is full of just paraphernalia, and it is an incredible setup. Now, I've never been there personally, but my buddy Matt, who lives in North Carolina, visits there frequently, and I've seen plenty of photos and videos from him. So when I reached out and asked, all of you, what modern tiki cocktails you'd like to see, my buddy Matt said, hey, I'd love to see you do the Soro Drowner. I wrote back to Matt and I said, listen, Matt, I've got a busy schedule. I'm not gonna make it down to North Carolina anytime soon as much as I'd love to visit you. So I don't know how I'd go about doing this. He said, not a problem, Andy. I happen to know the owner. I'll reach out to him. So we reached out to the owner. He asked him for the recipe and the owner was super nice and willing to share the recipe. That's one of the things I love about this community. Now, if you know anything about tiki history, tiki cocktails for a very long time were treasured secrets that were not shared. Nowadays, that's not the case. A lot of people are willing to share their recipes. Now, some aren't, but most are. And if you're willing to ask nice enough, most of them will. Here's the deal when it comes to sharing recipes and then recreating them. I love to share my recipes. I view Tiki as open source. So I love when other people share them with me. The one caveat that I see all the time though is give credit where credit is due. If someone shares a recipe with you and you go and remake it, tell people that that's who you got it from or if you're making any adjustments to the recipe. The reason people didn't wanna share their recipes was because they didn't want people to steal them or they didn't want their recipe ending up on a menu that they did not approve of. So here's the deal. If you're gonna ask somebody for a recipe and they're gonna share it for you and you're gonna share it with other people, make sure you give credit where credit is due. And if you happen to make any alterations to the recipe, make sure to talk about that. That way people don't get the wrong idea of what the recipe, the original recipe may actually be. So let's talk about this, the Sorrow Drowner. Who's the owner of the Sorrow Drowner and who created this cocktail? Well, that happened to be Alfred Brian Wheatley. And I happened to get talking to A. Brian and he's been a great guy and he has shared a bunch of different things with me. And just, again, that's one of the things I love about this community is how open people are. But anyway, let's see what we're gonna need to make the Sorrow Drowner. Then we'll make it, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about some of my modifications to this recipe. Listen, Alfred Bryan, I had to make some modifications, but listen, I will give credit where credit is due. Anyway, let's see what we're gonna need to make this cocktail. So for the Soro Drowner, you are going to need an aged Jamaican rum, a Demerara rum, orange liqueur, coconut milk, maple syrup, and pineapple juice. So if you're paying attention, a lot of these ingredients look similar to another cocktail also known as the painkiller. And that's where Alfred Bryan got his inspiration for this cocktail from. Now, first off, I need you all to understand that at the Soro Drowner, this signature cocktail of theirs is actually a bowl cocktail, meaning it is shareable between two to four people. The version I'm making today is a single serve version of that. So if you wanna know how to take the recipe that I'm doing and do it for multiple people, just multiply the recipe that I'm gonna give you by two and that's how they serve it at the Soro Drowner. Now, I'm gonna make this cocktail and I'm gonna talk about a few things because I am making a couple of iterations that work for me and we'll talk about a couple other ingredients that are a little odd in this cocktail, but don't worry, they all make sense once I talk about them. So in your mixing glass, you are going to need to add four ounces of pineapple juice, a half an ounce of maple syrup, an ounce of coconut milk, half an ounce of orange liqueur, three quarters of an ounce of an overproof Demerara rum, and one ounce of an overproof aged Jamaican rum. Add some crushed ice to your mixing glass. And give it a nice little shake for about eight to 10 seconds. Open pour into some large glassware. I'm using a snifter. 
Top it off with more crushed ice. Garnish it with a sprinkle of freshly grated nutmeg and cinnamon and a torch cinnamon stick. And don't forget your Surfside Sip Straw. So there you have it, the Sorrow Drowner, almost as served at the Sorrow Drowner in Wilmington, North Carolina. Let's give it a try, let's see how it tastes. Yeah, so this is a juicy, creamy, smooth, easy to drink cocktail. So let's talk about a couple of the choices that Alfred Bryan made and a couple of the substitutions that I made that work for me. First off, let's talk about our aged Jamaican rum. Now I'm using Smith & Cross because that's what Alfred Bryan uses at the Sorrow Drowner. You're gonna need that overproof rum that's got a lot of funk with it to push through a lot of this pineapple juice that's in this cocktail. Now for the Demerara rum, Alfred Bryan actually uses Pusser's Gunpowder Proof Rum. Now I couldn't get my hands on that, so I am going with an overproof Demerara rum. Now the reason being is that the, gun, the Pusser's Gunpowder is a Demerara based rum that is 54.5% ABV. So what I did was I took an overproof Demerara rum and scaled down my measurement. Originally, Brian would use an ounce of the Pusser's Gunpowder Proof rum. I'm using three quarters of an ounce and it equals out to about the same amount of ABV for this cocktail, which is why I did that. So if you've got the Gunpowder Proof Pusser's at home, use an ounce of that as opposed to three quarter ounce of the overproof Demerara rum. Next up, we have an orange liqueur. I'm going with Pierre Franz Dry Curacao and this is the same one that Alfred Brian uses at the Sorrow Drowner. Next up, we have coconut milk. Now, normally in a painkiller or a colada style cocktail, we see coconut cream or cream of coconut, coconut syrup, whatever you wanna call it. Now, Alfred Bryan clearly talked to me about this and said, I wanted to go with coconut milk. And I said, why? He said, well, here's the deal. When you make a shareable cocktail, you wanna eliminate as much backwash as possible. So you need a cocktail that's a little bit thinner. And the coconut syrup would have made it a little bit more thick. So he went with coconut milk instead. Now I'm using Thai coconut milk, unsweetened. It is a lather gelatinous substance when you first take it out of the can. So my recommendation, take it out of the can, scoop it into a blender, whip it up a little bit just to give it some aeration. That makes it easier to pour and work with. Next up, we have the maple syrup. Now, Alfred Bryan specifically calls for a grade B maple syrup. Now, why are we adding maple syrup to this cocktail? Well, our coconut milk does not have sugar in it, it's unsweetened. So to make up for that lack of sweetness that we would normally get from a coconut syrup, we're adding maple syrup. Now, Alfred Bryan distinctly calls for a grade B maple syrup. And the reason being is because it's a little bit harsher. And so that flavor of that maple punches through just a little bit more. And of course, we finish out with our four ounces of pineapple juice because, well, that's what we typically see in a colada style cocktail anyway. So there you guys have it. There is the Sorrow Drowner, almost as served at the Sorrow Drowner in Wilmington, North Carolina. I did make some substitutions. Alfred Bryan, I really hope I did your cocktail justice. This is a delicious cocktail that is easy to sip and dangerous with the amount of alcohol and the proof that's in this thing. Well, that's it for today's video, everyone. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, click that little notification bell. Now, I am shooting this video. At currently, I have 920 subscribers on YouTube. This video will air towards the beginning of November. So I'm really hoping to get a thousand subscribers between now and the middle of December when it's my one year YouTube anniversary. So if you guys could help me out and blast this channel on all your social medias and say, hey, give this guy a follow, he's great. I'd really appreciate it. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Follow me over on Instagram and TikTok at Easy Tiki Drinks. And until next time, everyone, you know the deal. Take it easy.